Hello. Hi. Um, okay. This is this is Dr. Ross Dunbar, um, who is a naturopath and a, a Chinese uh, doctor of Chinese medicine. And anything else? Am I missing something? Actually, I have a master's in Oriental medicine, not a doctor of Chinese medicine, okay. and I'm a certified functional medicine practitioner. And also, my very handsome father-in-law. Oh my! Um, and welcome, welcome to the party here, Ross. Thank you for jumping on with us. Um, you're always saving our lives um, everywhere we are around the world, and including, you know, um, on our, you know, when you come with us on our yatras. He, Ross is seeing all, everyone and you know helping them, and just um, and, and it is an incredible doctor. So thank you for joining us. Um, so just want to, you know, kind of talk about uh, uh, protecting ourselves from viruses in general, this particular virus, what we, what we know, what we don't know, and any recommendations that you have. And I think there's, there's one aspect of it where people want to know things that they can do without having to buy anything, you know, without supplementation, things they can do. And then obviously um, supplements that are the best for, for th these times. So you can just take, take any of that and kind of go with it. Tell us things. Okay. So first of all, I'll thank you for doing this and empowering the people because I really think that's what this is about. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like there's so much fear um, out there. And I think that uh, understandably, because in conventional medicine, there really is nothing to treat this with. And yeah. um, that is scary. And uh, however, in, as Dr. Pratima said, in the, in the long history of Ayurveda and Chinese medicine, and even the, the much shorter history, but valuable history of naturopathic, functional, and integrative medicine has so much to offer. Yeah. And uh, the main thing is we not live, we not um, be in fear. And I think those principles that she brought up are just so very important. Yeah. You know, most importantly, meditation and just being grounded and loving each other and being calm, you know, through this. And, uh, and that's really about our innate immunity. It's really all about that we have to remember, we ha already have innate immunity. And so everything, you know, we're gonna do is just gonna be enhancing that. And that's really what this is about. Yeah. So uh, I feel like I have to get out of the way, not that it's not extremely important, it is very important, but I just, you know, I have lots of notes and lots of things and I'm sure I'll probably end up just chunking it all and just going whatever. But I feel like hygiene, I just want to say some things just to reiterate what everybody already has so much access to, but it is really critical. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to go through a little list really quickly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, like hand washing frequently, as we all know, so important. And washing our entire hands, you know, our thumbs, our fingernails, like we're going into surgery, except we're not up to our elbows. Yeah. And then, of course, the day sing happy birthday because it's 20 or 30 seconds. But being yogis, you know, why don't we just do a mantra? Yeah. yeah. So uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm, go I'm doing Ad Gure, Gure, Nam Ad Gure Name. You got Gure Name. That's, that's a good one. That's and a good one. Going through the whole that two times. I feel it like when I do it two times, it's 20 seconds. Yeah. So, and it's protective. Not? I don't that's know why cool. I'm drawn to that one drawn to that one for some reason and then um so hand washing critical hand sanitizer at least 60 percent alcohol if you don't can't wash your hands with soap and water which are fine and then um of course staying at home unless you really need to get out and uh, you should avoid large crowds and uh and if you need medical attention to get out you call the doctor don't go to their office because if you feel like you may have this virus, you don't want to infect a bunch of other people, you yeah. know, and just let them screen it. And, um, and, you know, maybe a comment on that. So, you know, this particular virus predominantly manifests with fever and often it goes straight to a cough, you know, whereas influenza A, which I had my staff person call me this morning or text me at seven o'clock and said her son had fever and a sore throat. Well, the chances are he doesn't have COVID-19. He probably has influenza A or H1N1, whatever, just something else. It's another flu, another cold. And it's not, you know, it's not going, uh, 
into because this upper respiratory in the nasal, the sinuses, sinus, sinus, rhinitis, all that is typically not the way this is presenting. And I'm, I'm basing this on all the stuff I've read and, and also how it's presenting in China because I've been, I've been yeah. reading several sources of what they're presenting in China in yeah. ch from a Chinese medicine perspective. Yeah. And it's yeah. not manifesting. So um, that's good for people to know so they're not flipping out that they've got COVID-19. But even if they do, it's like, man, we already have what it takes to get rid of this. Most of us do, unless we're really immunocompromised. Yeah. You know, and it all also brings up how important it is if we're going to be around people that are immunocompromised potentially or the elderly who may be more uh, naturally immune compromised because they don't have as much stomach acid. They don't digest the foods as well. They're getting older. You know, their their defense is not quite like ours. We need to respect that and not expose them, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. And even the social distancing, I know that's what you're really having to do now. And, you know, with with the with all all the studios and everything, I think that um, it's um, it's important. I mean, I'm certainly practicing it, yeah. besides going in to treat people. Mm -hmm. And um, um, irrigating the nose, you know, I love what Dr. Pratima said, and I think all of that is so critically important, and what great ideas, and the GI practice, and but I do think working with the nose, I mean, X-Clear is a over-the-counter nasal spray that people can buy that has xylitol and grapefruit seed extract that is proven to be effective. Uh, it's zinc based. Um, What's it called? Uh, X-Clear? Excuse me. It's not zinc based. That's the one I was thinking about another one. It's called X-Clear. Okay. C-L-E-A-R. Okay. And, uh, and, and that was recommended by a lot of my colleagues. And I think, you know, but I also think using like, gosh, you could use like colloidal silver maybe or you could use essential oils you know, in your nose, in your mouth. I love the idea of putting those essential oils on a, on a um, you know, like a scarf or a bandana, yeah. or a handkerchief, you know, with tissues. I think that's great because that's where it's coming in, right? It's spread by respiratory droplets. Uh, it's believed to be truly droplets now. Uh, at this point, last I read by one of my scholarly colleagues, it was not aerosol, you know, like going like crazy in small aerosols. But nevertheless, it doesn't matter. And you know what? Even if we get it, you know, most of us are going to be fine. We might be sick for a week with the flu at most, probably, uh, probably not, you know. Yeah. And uh, we'll shed it and pass it on to other people. So um, anyway, I um, think also, so now I'm going, I've kind of discussed the hygiene now, more of an innate immune system enhancement, which would be, uh, loading up on foods and spices with antiviral properties, which most of us know what they are, right? Like mm -hmm. garlic and oregano and onions and uh, ginger and fermented foods. And, um, and then eating lots of colored fruits and vegetables rich in antioxidants, which are really very important. Uh, and some of those foods also are, you know, the medicinal mushrooms are really good. And of course, you can take those supplementally as well. Myotaki, reishi. Uh, shiitake, um, cordyceps, turkey tail, all of those. But I, I think specifically from my perspective, reishi would be one of the most important ones yeah. as a as a she tonic yeah. right now. And that's what I want to get into a little bit too in terms of diet. And it dovetails beautifully with what Dr. Putina says, or at least maybe not beautifully, but for the most part. Yeah. You know, um, and... Um, I think cordyceps is a tremendous mushroom for, um, for, well, I don't think I know it is, for the lung yin. And, and uh, so that's to protect the lungs as well. But it also, just like ratio, you're both very effective at transforming phlegm. Hmm. So uh, those are great mushrooms. Um, and look, when I get into, if I start making, I will make some recommendations. I know you're going to ask me specifically about things that I'm using in my practice to treat people to prevent yeah. and or or using to prevent. Um, and then there are many, many treatments I have, you know, planned if, if necessary. I just think everybody needs to know that they need to consult with their medical practitioner before they do any of these things. Yeah. Because I don't know everybody's specific conditions, like if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, you can't do high doses of vitamin A. I mean, there's so many things. And so please, um, consult with your medical practitioner before you try some of these specific recommendations. Yeah. 
but I think it would be amiss to not mention some of those because I feel like they're extremely valuable. Uh, but continuing on on more innate immune enhancement aside from supplements. Um, still, let's see, staying well hydrated. Um, and that, you know, doing non-caffeinated teas and uh, lots of water, you know, typically naturopathic doctors recommend half your body weight in pounds and ounces of water per day. And that's a common recommendation that I think is pretty right on up to yeah. about 200 pounds. Uh, but you know, that, that includes non-caffeinated beverages, not caffeinated beverages. Those actually take away from your hydration. And if you do end up with fever or anything, you need to stay well hydrated and have electrolytes and have vegetable broth or bone broth if someone is an um, omnivore. And uh, just to get the electrolytes and all those minerals and nutrients that are so rich there. Yeah. And that actually brings up food. Um, yeah, eating fermented foods are really good. Um, avoiding simple sugars, of course, and processed foods. I mean, sugars inhibit neutrophil activity, which is the macrophages of the first line of defense from the white blood cells that, that take care of things. And that's the innate immunity, right? It's like we don't have to have vaccines necessarily. Of course, it would be of very little value here, and it probably will be in the future because it'll mutate, and they have so many adjuvants in them, and, you know, anyway. But our innate immunity... Um, is 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 there so let's encourage it by eating a good diet and um and then of course fresh air and moderate exercise um it's so important to be out in nature you know and um and breathe the fresh air and appreciate you know just live in gratitude for all the, all that we do have i think that that yeah. of itself is such an important thing to be in gratitude yes. Yes. and what that does for and, and, you know, and, and gratitude for how strong your immune system is and, and reminding yourself of how powerful you really are. And, and uh, the practices about exercise, of course, yoga and all the stuff you're teaching is so critical that people are balancing. I always think of exercise in terms a yin type of exercise and yang exercise. And to me, the yin is doing, well, not all of the yoga is yin. <laughs> Some of yours are pretty yang, yeah. but uh, you know, yoga can be everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's important to have both, I think, to have you know different a variety, diversifying your your activities and your diet. I uh, I have a saying I tell patients to diversify everything in their life, their financial investments, everything except for their lover. But that's questionable to me. People <laughs> diversify their lovers too. There's yeah, uh, you know, you know, no comment. <laughs> no comment. Interesting stuff happening you now. Well, you know. Anyway, uh, yeah, no comment. All right. Yeah. So um, adequate sleep. Obviously, it's important to um, get plenty of sleep and deep sleep. Yeah. And then stress is critical. And uh, that we reduce that as much as we can and through our practices of what we're talking about, yoga and meditation and, um, and deep breathing and activating that 10th cranial nerve, the vagus nerve, which is the parasympathetic nervous system dominance, which really is life changing. If we can stay in a parasympathetic nervous system dominant state more, more have more tone there than the sympathetic nervous system, which is fight or flight which is where, you know, the news is taking us. Yeah, um, and, and, and the, the, the toilet paper shortage. Right. <laughs> Sympathetic <laughs> well, that's, dominance. That's a, that's a good reason. Yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah. I and mean, that is an odd like, statement. Which are we right? Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. Which hand, that's right, elbow. Okay. All right, so, um, yeah, and then not overeating. You know, eating only if you're hungry, uh, especially if you're sick. I think really people don't need to eat as much as they eat and need to eat lighter. And I want to say that the diet, um, so I have a book here that, and I give handouts to patients all the time, depending on the pattern diagnosis of them, whether they're chi deficient, you know, chi stagnant, uh, phlegm, over accumulation of phlegm or yin deficiency or yang deficiency or whatever. But chi deficient diet is really the diet that we should be eating now where we boost our chi, yeah. which is also a similar diet to one that's um, a diet for dampness and phlegm because the chi comes from the spleen stomach, which then sends the clear chi up to the lungs. Mm. And the lungs, you know, are what the lung chi includes the nasal passages all the way through. So we need to really have strong spleen chi. 
Um, and so um, I would recommend that people eat the same kind of diet that, that Dr. Pratima was saying, which is, um, you know, warm foods, really predominantly, if not only in soups and things that are easy to digest and not greasy foods, dairy products, or sugar. Yeah. Or cold foods. Yeah. I mean, I can go into more detail. And the percentages of the foods that are typically recommended are um, 10% to 20% protein and 30 to 40% vegetables and 40 to 60% carbs, which are of course, I know you love to hear that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're, we're into it. You. Well, especially, you know, with quarantine life, people are going to be you know, walking from their, their, their Netflix to their refrigerator quite often throughout the day. Right. <laughs> those, exactly. are the only, those are the only steps people are going to get. So. I know. Well, like Dr. Pratima would say, then I guess then they need to take the food out of the refrigerator and let it sit for a while <laughs> so it's not too cold and she's right I mean and you know what I do I mean look as you know I mean I will admit I do a lot of protein drinks with greens and a potpourri of nutrients but I have added I, st I add coriander and cardamom and ginger uh, and cinnamon to my drinks to balance the mm -hmm, cold nature mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. people can think like that just bouncing out the cold with warm is important if you're going to sin like that. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So um, <laughs> anyway, I um, and, it, and it tastes good. And I, and of course, I learned. I really appreciate a lot of what she says in the similarities in Chinese medicine after doing the Panchakarma in Bali for a couple of weeks, uh, almost a year ago, where I really studied. I, I read a little bit about it and learned all the overlaps. You know, and there's yeah. a lot of. Ross, Ross, and um, and Tegnam and I did Panchakarma together in Bali, and it was it was it was uh, <laughs> only we will know what happened there. <laughs> it was real. It was real. It was a lot. It was everything. So, um, so if people do get sick, Epsom salt baths you know, are a great way to detoxify the body and help help soothe you as hot water bottles if you're really cold. And then again, just doing vegetable, chicken, or bone broths. And then, um, let's see, what else did I want to talk about here? I wanted to talk about... Will, will you give us supplements now? Will you give us some supplements? I will, and I'm going to do that via one source I have, which talked about, you know, when you get sick... What your symptoms are when you're sick is often it's not the bug, right? It's usually not the bacteria or the virus. It's usually your immune system that, that makes you feel like crap, yeah. right? It's interferon and, you know, all these substances that are released, and it's called a cytokine storm. And I just want to mention some supplements that are notorious for interfering with the cytokine storm. Uh, and, and well, before I say that, I want to say, I just want to really make sure people really get this. Fever is your friend. Yeah. And fever, fever is critical. I mean, I mean, look, first of all, anytime we disrupt any natural process in the world, you know, why are we doing that? I mean, what is the effect of damming that river? What is the effect of stopping a body's natural response? You know, yeah. whether it's diarrhea or whatever, we need to really just take a step back. And so fever is the way we were designed evolutionarily and, and theistically, as I believe, uh, for to kill off the organism. And so 101 to 103 degree fever is considered a therapeutic fever. Right. I'm not suggesting anyone should, um, if you have really high fever, uh, they should consult with their practitioner because you don't want to have febrile seizures and or, you know, end up having brain damage from high fever. Right. But oh, 1 to 103 is a therapeutic fever range, and let's not, not be afraid of it. And I never, as my son would say <laughs> and daughter, I never suppressed it, especially his, which was high a lot because he's like that, got that uh, pit of personality like I have. Yeah. And uh, he, well, has a lot of heat and fire. Yeah. And so does. And so anyway, he would get really hot. But you know what? I would just keep it in a therapeutic range. He could endure it, whereas somebody else might not endure it the same way. And you might have to use something to lower their fever because they're screaming and hollering the whole time. But if you can handle if they can handle that, stay with it so it can kill the infection. So substances, um, the cytokines, 
that's part of it, you know, on the response. Vitamin C. Now, I know I'd listened, I got some information before about Dr. Pratima's recommendations on not doing C because it was acidic. Yeah. And I want to say that, look, I run into this problem a lot with naturopathic and Chinese medicine that there are, you know, conflicts. Sure. You know, and so, uh, and there's going to be, and there'll be, you know, uh, there'll be the, some of those. So vitamin C is profoundly antiviral. Uh, I mean, effective, in, and I do it intravenously, I do it orally, uh, but I, I'll just mention it. Well, I won't go into great detail, but in China, it has been working intravenously for these infections. Interesting. Or I should say for previous viral infections. Okay. Actually, it says for the treatment of severe COVID-19 infected pneumonia, 18 patients were treated. Yeah. 24 grams of vitamin C daily for seven days. Intravenously. But anyway... Yeah, well, and their doses are so much smaller. 1.5 grams IV every six hours given with hydrocortisone, which we would never do, and thymine, which is B1, significantly decreased mortality and prevented progressive organ failure in patients with sepsis. In fact, the patients treated with the vitamin C protocol had an 8.5% death rate compared with 40.4% in the control group. Huh. So, you know, these doses are comparable to what we do when we orally dose one gram three or four times a day, you know, and that's, you never want to take more than a thousand milligrams, but I do respect, look, I think our Ayurveda and Chinese medicine and the basic tenets uh, are, are number one, but if we're going to, we need to, we just need to balance this out and consider, consider this information. So vitamin D uh, can be called a pro survival molecule. Vitamin D is really important. Uh, not only helps the immune system, you know, by dampening during an excessive or chronic, you know, reaction inflammation, but also to rapidly um, increase the completion of the, um, and uh, help, it helps the innate cells kill bacteria and viruses. Yeah, the, vitamin, so the, vitamin, vitamin, D, D. the vitamin D just seems so essential. It's essential. It is, it is, and the K2, I know that came up previously with a practitioner, I heard about that. Uh, Proton City brought that to my attention. And of course, I use K2 with, you know, in my osteoporosis patients, especially, or my cardiovascular, to drive the calcium into the bones yeah. instead of into other tissues. So, but this was something about this particular virus and uh, K2 MK7 fraction. It's called the MK7 frac subfraction of K2. I think MK4 or MK7 are both, they kind of, there's debate about that. But K2 is great to take with vitamin D because it is really synergistic. Um, vitamin D also neutralizes these lipopolysaccharides that are responsible for a lot of damage we see when people get bacterial infections, which happens after this viral infection in the bloodstream. And, uh, and it also has antimicrobial and immunomodulatory effects. I won't go too much more into that. So curcumin, which is turmeric, is also really helpful in terms of the cytokine storm, as is quercetin. Uh, quercetin is something that's in the peeling of on, peel of onions and other substances, has different sources, but it's a flavonoid compound. So uh, these are all very safe things. Yeah, and all simple and very simple. Yeah. Very simple. And, you know, curcumin, quercetin, vitamin D, you know? I mean, just, and, you know, just absolutely safe. And what else did I say? There was something else on vitamin C. And then uh, Boswellia is another one. And, you know, Indian frankincense. Uh, uh, Boswellia is a wonderful herb as a natural anti-inflammatory and, and, again, interfering with this cytokine response. So it can bring some relief to people when they're sick and also help in another mechanism of, um, I'll have to see where it falls, but I, that's going into another realm, but also it interferes with the viral replication, or maybe it's through immunonutrition. Um, bacillus coagulans, well, they say bacillus strain, species strains also helps. I think probiotics are very important. I really do. I think everybody uh, should take probiotics and should diversify the probiotics. Um, these, this is a, a, a spore forming probiotic, which is helpful. I usually give my patients a spore, one, a spore forming one like bacillus coagulans and then also, uh, you know, the classic lactobacillus acidophilus and bifidobacterium. Which, that's, eating fermented food. That's, super, that's superbiotic that you give us? What's that one called? The soup, the superbiotic? 
No, it's got another uh, Pro Biomax Plus. I think is the one I give you. It's from Zymogen. I mean, I don't. You know, I'm not here. I don't want to. I'm not trying to sell or promote products at all. But yeah, that's a really good one because it, it has like really the silicon. It's and really it, yeah, good. and I just I use a diverse number of those <clears throat> things. I think that people just need to consider that. But monetarily too, just all of us can eat fermented foods as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, think we, I think we need more if we end up on antibiotics. I think we need to take the probiotics for about a month. But um, anyway, that's a whole other. Uh, um, what so so we have to wrap up, Ross. But any what what are your yeah. any other kind of like final points that you feel like you you want to tell people? You you you. Yeah. I could talk to you forever about this stuff, but. Yeah, I don't know. I could talk forever. Well. It it's all about the terrain. It's about your your system. And I think NAC, I want to mention N-acetylcysteine is a very, very important nutrient. Uh, it's an amino acid. It's very safe. And there was a study, a multi-center study that showed profound improvement among the elderly with the flu. It, it should have changed science today, literally. And I, I have it here it's not right here, but it's over there. And since we're running out of time, but I could get that if anybody wants that. And it is profound. And NAC, I'm going to make, I'm going to say what I'm taking, but I'm not going to, I'm going to say consult with your doctor. But I'm just, you know, I have to say that to cover it all, right? But 600 milligrams twice a day was what was used in this study. Of the and NAC, yeah. Of the NAC to prevent the flu. And it was profoundly effective. Um, I highly recommend we, it. I mean, we, 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 we take it. Much higher, yeah, and we can use much higher doses if we're treating the flu, okay? You know, like in the six to 8,000 milligram range. But, uh, you know, the obvious stuff too, good jug is zinc, you know, elderberry, uh, licorice, melissa, uh, Chinese formula, jade windscreen to me is the most important Chinese formula. And, I, and you could add another. Uh, say it again. Say the Chinese uh, formula. Uh, it's called Jade Windscreen. Chinese name is Yuping Feng Song. Oh, okay. Uh, of, of, we have it here. If we have it, we're going to talk more about it. Sure okay. you do. Yeah. So Jade Windscreen, you know, one in China, or what's often recommended now, and this is not classical Chinese medicine doing this, but is they'll mix it with a wind heat formula, which has got some antivirals in it to prevent the virus. Yeah. So like Yin Chow. Classic yeah. one, yeah. Or Song Ju, Song Ju Yin, which is one like Yin Chow, but with a cough. And then um, constitutional homeopathy, of course, essential oils, gargles, all this stuff. Uh, using thieves or RC if you have young living oils, you know, and oregano, thyme. Diffusing oils in your home might be a great idea, right? Yeah, we're doing and, it. And um, and I just want to throw out for anybody that's interested in homeopathy. There's two call, one colleague in particular who's done tremendous epidemiological research and has been following these things for since the 90s. And he comes up with the remedies every year that fit that particular wow. illness. And so if wow. anybody has an information toward homeopathy, I'm going to mention a few homeopathic remedies that he has said you should look at them. Of course, I have all the descriptions of the remedies, but it's just sulfur, lycopodium, phosphorus, arsenicum album and bryonia and this other homeopath said that the particular virus was bryonia was 6c or 30c bryonia and he said if there was chest tightness or shortness of breath like a podium 30c okay so wait, wait, wait 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 what was the first one you you said that fast you said 6c or 30c of what well he also this this second homeopath who um did an analysis of confirmed cases of COVID-19 is suggesting that for prophylaxis and maybe treatment of the virus, the bryonia, which was one that- Bryonia, Dr. yeah. Yeah, and this is Dr. Manish Bhatia. Uh, Bhatia, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Anyway, he was saying bryonia 6C or 30C, and then that if chest tightness or shortness of breath, consider like a podium 30C. Like a podium? Uh, like a podium? Like a podium. Podium. It's okay. Chinese club, Chinese club mobs. I'm not familiar but, uh, with that one. Yeah. But the other, the other doctor, Paul Herskew, and people can go look up Paul Herskew, and he was coming up with this list of sulfur, like a podium, phosphorus, arsenicum, and bryonia. 
Wow. And so it's interesting. There is some overlap with those two guys. Yeah, yeah. And that's so, really interesting. So if you're into homeopathy and you have children, you know there's no harm to the stuff. It's completely benign because it's no longer a molecule, original substance left in the solution. So. Um, Ross, I want. I I, mean, I think we probably should have a follow up to this because you know you're yeah you're such a mad scientist and you know so much. Um, but the, we have to jump on with this next person. But um, thank you so much yeah. for all of your research and all of your knowledge. I think we should talk more. Um, is there you 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 aren't you don't see people that you haven't seen already via Skype, right? Or via Zoom? No, I can't. I'm not. I'm just wondering how I can do it. I, I technically can't treat anybody. Yeah, you can give you can give another, recommendations. Another. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can have conversations. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I can I can do that. And uh, and how I do people get in touch with you, Russ? What's your is well, it email? They could email me. They could email me at drrossdunbar at gmail.com. Drrossdunbar at gmail.com. Um, if you want to talk a little bit more about um, this, uh, these subjects or anything else, because Ross, you keep us, you keep us healthy like nobody, nobody's business. And we're very lucky to have you. And thank you for jumping on today. We really appreciate you. My pleasure. I'm lucky to have you. Love you. And Love everybody. you. Satnam. Satnam. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Reality Riffing. These are conversations that I think are important with people who are doing great things in the world about subject matters that need to be discussed. If you enjoyed the content, the conversation, please feel free to share with your people, share with your friends and family, rate the podcast below, and also subscribe.